You're listening to The Philosopher's Note on Do You. More wisdom in less time. Hi, this is Brian. Welcome to The Philosopher's Notes on Do You. 12 Laws to Access the Power in You to Achieve Happiness and Success by Russell Simmons. Simmons says, quote, In the end, the overriding factor in whether or not you realize your dreams is going to be you, not the world, you. End quote. So I didn't know much about Russell Simmons until my friend Robin Sharma, author of The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari and The Greatness Guide, first sent me his book. There's no way I would have guessed Russell would have been such a profoundly spiritual yet remarkably real and unquestionably successful expression of his spirituality in the 21st century. The New York Times calls Russell Simmons one of, quote, the most innovative and influential figures in modern American business and culture. He's a hip-hop mogul, affectionately known as the godfather of hip-hop, in fact, producer, entrepreneur, and all-around rock star. And he's a yogi, vegan, and deeply spiritual guy. I like that combo, and I love his book. It kind of makes me imagine Stephen Covey's Seven Habits, written by a hip-hop mogul for the 21st century. Do You is packed with inspiring stories, Russell's wit and wisdom on everything from getting your mind right, living with authenticity, dreaming big, and doing your best. It's one of those books you read, and at the end you say to yourself, that author is a good person, which is always a standard by which I measure my favorite books. So without further ado, let's jump into some of the big ideas in Russell's 12 Laws of Success. And of course, don't forget to do you. We'll start with the first big idea. What's your vision? Quote, in my experience, there's only one thing that will always steer you towards success. That's to have a vision and to stick with it. Once I have a vision for a new venture, I'm going to ride that vision until the wheels come off. End quote. That's powerful. This entire note could be on the first chapter alone, where Russell establishes law number one, see your vision and stick with it. Discovering your vision is law number one for a reason. We've got to have a vision that drives us. So, what's your vision? As Simmons says, quote, focus on your vision and keep going until you hit the finish line. Don't be one of the people who believe in their vision at first, but then give up. See it through, no matter how long it takes. Understand that obstacles are just part of the game. Whatever you imagine, you can achieve. Once you realize this truth, no one is going to be able to stop you. End quote. The next big idea is mantra. Quote, the word mantra comes from two Sanskrit words, man, to think, and tra, tool. So the literal translation is a tool of thought. And that's how mantras are used in Buddhist and Hindu practices, as tools that clear your mind of distractions. Because when you focus on repeating that mantra over and over again, soon the noise will die down and all you will hear is your inner voice. End quote. Mantra, a tool of thought. Have you used mantras before? Powerful stuff. Some of my favorites over the years range from reciting thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you again and again. So much that when my mind was silent, this little voice would pop up out of nowhere and say, thank you. It's really cool. Three more of my favorites come from Deepak Chopra's brilliant book, The Spontaneous Fulfillment of Desire. I have another note on that you'd probably dig. They were, I am totally independent of the good or bad opinion of others. I am beneath no one. I fearlessly handle any and all challenges in my life. I've said those three probably tens of thousands of times. Powerful tools for the mind. So what tools of thought will you introduce into your life starting now? As Simmons says, quote, A clear and focused mind will last a lifetime. Getting your mind in shape is nothing less than the key to sustainable success in the world. How about the next big idea? Breakfast of champions. Quote, when I start my day by reflecting on all the things I have to be grateful for, I'll have a much more rewarding day. End quote. Well, there's a powerful way for us to start our days, huh? My strong recommendation, if you aren't already doing it, start your day thinking about all the things you're grateful for and end your day the same way and sneak in as many other instances as you possibly can. And don't forget to especially thank the annoying things and annoying people who are teaching and challenging you to embody your highest self even when you don't feel like it. So what are you grateful for? 
In the PDF, I actually created a little bit of space where you can write, I'm grateful for, and then one, two, three, four, five different things that you're currently grateful for. You may want to press pause right now and give yourself some time to imagine that if you're driving or working out or whatever. Um, And if you have a piece of paper available and a pen, grab that and write it down. One, two, three, four, five. What are you grateful for? Come up with that list and feed yourself like a champ every morning by thinking about the things you're grateful for. All right, the next big idea is rotting fish. Quote, your purpose is to act on the resources God gives you. If God gives you a bucket of fish, you have to distribute those fish. If you don't, they're going to rot, attract a bunch of flies, and start stinking up your soul, end quote. That's pretty strong. And if you don't believe Simmons, how about Joseph Campbell? He says, to refuse the call means stagnation. What you don't experience positively, you will experience negatively. That's not good enough. How about Abraham Maslow? He says, what one can be, one must be. And if that's still not enough, what about Jesus? Jesus says, if you bring forth what is inside you, what you bring forth will save you. If you don't bring forth what is inside you, what you don't bring forth will destroy you. It's powerful stuff. You have gifts to give to the world. We all do. We need to give them. And please remember the next big idea. Don't stall. Quote, The pain that's created by avoiding hard work is actually much worse than any pain created from the actual work itself. Because if you don't begin to work on those ideas that God has blessed you with, they will become stagnant inside of you and eventually begin to eat away at you. You might seem okay on the outside, but inside you will be ill from not getting those ideas out of your heart and into the world. Stalling leads to sickness, but taking steps, even baby steps, always leads to success. End quote. That's beautiful. So many great teachers remind us of our need to just do it, to just take the next step in this precious hero's journey of ours. Simmons brilliantly articulates the pain we'll experience if we don't. It's subtle, but so powerful. It's almost like there's this internal subconscious computer that's keeping track of our every action, giving us a point for every time we step forward into growth and subtracting a point every time we step back into safety or fear or laziness. Imagine that. Let's say you start this morning at zero, which thankfully we're blessed with the ability to do. So it's first thing in the morning. Alarm goes off. Do you do what you've committed to doing? Whether that's getting up and out of bed immediately or silently breathing or thinking about your ideal day and everything you're grateful for. Or do you roll over and pull the pillow over your head and think about all that's wrong in your world? You get a plus one if you stepped forward, minus one if you went backward. Then let's assume you said you'd work out that morning. Well, do you? Plus one or minus one. And you can keep track moment to moment to moment. Plus one or minus one. Plus one or minus one. Plus one or minus one. At the end of the day, how do you think you'll feel if your subconscious mathematician adds it all up and you come out with a huge negative number, something like negative 8,549 or whatever? If that's where you are at the end of the day, you can bet you're going to want to turn on the TV and zone out or drink a beer or 10 or yell at your spouse and or kids. So quit stalling and start taking the baby steps. And always remember the pain of not doing your best is always greater than the pain of stepping forward. And that brings us to the next big idea, tapas. In the yogic tradition, Simmons says, this principle of using intense effort to burn through life's distractions is called tapas. It's another Sanskrit word, roughly defined as heat or essential energy. The concept is that through a disciplined approach to work and self-sacrifice, tapas will burn away the negativity that separates us from God. By working our hardest and happily enduring the hardships of life, we are able to create a sense of peace and clarity in ourselves. End quote. That's just amazing. Who would have thought a hip-hop mogul would be teaching us so much Sanskrit? Tapas. The word literally means heat or essential energy. And, as Simmons brilliantly articulates, as we live our life with discipline, passion, and integrity, we burn through the negativity that can separate us from God. And that's a straight line to bliss. My recommendation, burn, burn, burn. And Simmons says, quote, The person who understands dharma will have the opposite reaction to a hard job. That person will be eager to get started, 
no matter what kind of work is in front of her, because she understands that she's doing God's work. And when you're working for God, nothing is too hard. The next big idea is age and numbers. Simmons says, quote, age ain't nothing but a number, end quote. So how often do you make excuses for why you can't do something because of your age? You too old to start something? Too young for it? Ridiculous. As Simmons advises, age ain't nothing but a number. And in the words of Satchel Paige, how old would you be if you didn't know how old you are? I love that. (laughs) I'd be about 25, 28 maybe. How about you? And what have you been holding back on? Get out and rock it. And the next big idea obstacles. Simmons says, whatever obstacles appear in your path, put your head down and get past them. Those obstacles aren't real. They're just God's way of testing you. He's asking you, do you want to make it or not? End quote. So how do you respond to obstacles? Next time you face one, imagine that it's really just God asking you, well, do you really want to make it or not? And of course, answer yes. <laughs> And get back to work with a smile. Okay, the next big idea is eye on the path. Quote, I know some people say, keep your eyes on the prize. But I disagree. When your eyes are stuck on the prize, you're going to keep stumbling and crashing into things. If you really want to get ahead, you've got to keep your eyes focused on the path. End quote. I love that. And Simmons follows it up with, quote, always focus on your effort instead of the results of that effort. End quote. That's just great. And it's kind of like a brilliant 21st century application of the classic Bhagavad Gita wisdom, which says, quote, The awakened sages call a person wise when all his undertakings are free from anxiety about results. How about you? Once you've frozen your ideal vision in your mind, do you obsess about the results or do you put yourself on super pilot and completely immerse yourself in doing your best moment to moment to moment? Well, as you get yourself into that groove, think about this big idea, being a blessing. Quote, in my opinion, his problem was that every day he was waking up trying to figure out what he can get instead of waking up trying to figure out what he can give. Instead of asking for a blessing, he should have been practicing being a blessing. End quote. Brilliant. Again, we've heard this before. It's simple. But are you embodying this ideal? Let's wake up every morning striving to find more and more powerful ways to give ourselves to the world, shall we? As we do that, we're practicing the next big idea, karma economics. Quote, the science is simple. When you give the world love and respect, the world will give you love and respect back. This is law number eight in Russell's 12 laws of success. The science of success, plant the good seeds. So we've all heard this one before. The Bhagavad Gita teaches us, when we do wrong, we come to suffering. When we do good in the world, we come to happiness. The Bible teaches, you reap what you sow. Eric Butterworth in Spiritual Economics says, the law is exact. If you give, really work in a giving consciousness, you must receive. Ralph Waldo Emerson says in his essay, Compensation, cause and effect, means and ends, seed and fruit cannot be severed. For the effect already blooms in the cause. The end pre-exists in the means, the fruit and the seed. And Esther and Jerry Hicks describe the law of attraction in Ask and It Is Given. They say, quote, Every thought vibrates, every thought radiates a signal, and every thought attracts a matching signal back. We call that process the law of attraction. The law of attraction says, That which is like unto itself is drawn. And so, you might see the powerful law of attraction as a sort of universal manager that sees to it that all thoughts that match one another line up. And I can go on and on and on. So what seeds are you planting? Are you looking forward to their harvest? If not, what's one thing you need to stop doing right now that's no longer serving you? If you're giddy about the seeds you're planting coming to fruition right on, what else can you do? And in any case, what's the number one thing you know you should be doing that you're not currently doing? Make it a habit. Plant the seeds now. And the final big idea is always do you. Simmons says, when I talk about doing you, I'm really just asking you to listen to that voice of God inside of you again. End quote. So what's your voice telling you? Are you taking the time every day to get quiet? and tune into that deep intuition that's guiding you to your highest self, 
whether it's turning off the radio while you're in traffic and quietly breathing, and or going on hikes and or sitting in meditation, make sure you're finding the time to chat with God. And of course, get out there and do you. Now, to quick look at this great book, let's um, take a quick look at Russell Simmons and then some of the other notes I think you'll enjoy and then some of the quotes from the sidebar. So the author of Do You is Russell Simmons. Named one of America's 25 most fascinating entrepreneurs by Inc. Magazine and often featured on the covers of major magazines from Business Week and Fast Company to Rolling Stone and Spin, Simmons shares his maverick strategies and personal sources of empowerment in Do You. These are the laws that help Simmons build Rush Communications, a half-billion-dollar music and fashion empire that arose from his hip-hop record label Def Jam and launched a cultural revolution in the process. That's from his site where you can learn more about everything he's up to, russellsimmons.com. That's R-U-S-S-E-L-L, simmons.com. And if you enjoyed this note, I think you'll enjoy the notes on The Bhagavad Gita, The Joseph Campbell Companion, The Power of Ted, The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success, The Spontaneous Fulfillment of Desire, Ask and It Is Given, and Ralph Waldo Emerson. All right, now let's take a quick tour of the quotes in the sidebar of the PDF. We'll start with Vincent Van Gogh, who says, I dream my painting and paint my dream. Russell Simmons says, I'm just suggesting that when you're faced with fear and anxiety, don't medicate, meditate instead. And you've got to tell God thank you every day. He also says, the biggest thing that separates you from the success you seek is fear. Reverend Ike says, I've heard of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, but I've never heard of someday. Russell Simmons says, I knew it was unrealistic to think I could build an institution overnight, but if I took baby steps, eventually it would happen. And David Emerald says, it is the baby steps you take, the everyday things you do, that eventually lead to the manifestation of your outcome. Back to Russell Simmons, who says, The key ingredient to any kind of happiness or success is to never give less than your best. Vince Lombardi says, The dictionary is the only place where success comes before work. Yogananda says, The possession of material riches without inner peace is like dying of thirst while bathing in a lake. And Russell Simmons says, my purpose is defined by the power of giving back and sharing. And he says, when you do good by the world, the world will do good by you. And finally, E.E. Cummings says, it takes courage to grow up and turn out to be who you really are. And on that note, we will wrap this up with one simple phrase, do you. Have an awesome day. I look forward to sharing more with you soon. We hope you enjoyed this Philosopher's Note. Please go to www.philosophersnotes.com to download more.